and said, I was at Walmart yesterday, and she said, this is the craziest thing I know, but the Lord told me to buy y'all a hair dryer. Do you need a hair dryer? We have story after story after story of when you obey God, and, and listen to me, do you know for sure you're in the center of God's will financially? Do you know for sure that every dollar you're spending is where God wants you to spend it? It's a good feeling when you do. So we had this uh, car. The first thing we had to do was sell our car because we had a big payment on it. And the Lord said, I want you to sell it and buy a car for cash. And I said, Lord, we won't be able to buy much for cash. And he said, that's okay. You just obey me. So we sold the car and we had $750 left over. And we bought a a 1973 Ford station wagon with 130,000 miles on it uh, for $750. Uh, but we loved that car. We really did. We really loved it because we knew we were in the center of God's will. We prayed over it. We anointed it with oil about a quart a week. <laughs> and we drove that car. The second thing the Lord told me was don't manipulate. Stop manipulating. It is amazing how many of us manipulate for money. And when you manipulate, God will not provide for you. He will not bless manipulation. At this time, I was a traveling evangelist. And I would travel and I'd preach in church and do love offerings. And uh, they would, you know, the church would, after they'd give me a love offering. Some of them gave me um, like offerings. Um, Some gave don't like offerings, don't come back. But anyway, that that was where our entire income came from. And it's very standard when someone would call to say, you know, what are your financial requirements? And you say, well, you need to pay my expenses and give us a love offering. And I thought I was even being better than the rest of the guys because the other guys would say, and it has to be at least X amount. I need a minimum of this amount. And I didn't even say that. So I thought I was doing better. Well, the Lord told me, he said, from now on, you say, I have no financial requirements. I have no financial requirements. If you want me to come, I'll come. And so uh, pastors would call and they'd say, you know, I'd like for you to come preach a revival. And I'd say, okay. And they'd say, what are your financial requirements? And I'd say, I don't have any. I said, well, what do you mean you don't have any? I said, I don't have any. They said, well, do we need, we need to give you an offering? No, I said, no, you don't have to give us an offering. They said, well, h- how will you live? And, and, and then one pastor said, he said, well, we at least need to pay your expenses, don't we? I said, no, you don't have, no, no, God will take care of it. And they, they couldn't get, they, they'd never heard stuff like this. And this one pastor, he just couldn't get it. He just said to me over and over again, he said, well, if you come and we don't pay your expenses or give you an offering, he said, how are you going to make it? And I said something, and I really meant it right, but it didn't come out right. I said to him, I said, listen, if I come to your church and preach, and you don't give me a love offering, God will take care of me, and he'll take care of you. I, and he said, well, we'll give you an offering. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean that. I meant that God will provide for me, and he'll provide for you. And so, the, matter of fact, the first time we did this, um, a church called and said, we don't think we could pay you anything, but I just felt led to call you. And I said, and we want to see some people saved. I said, we'll come. Don't worry about that. So we got in that station wagon and we were driving to Oklahoma. I pulled into a gas station to get gas, filled the cart with gas, went in to pay for it. And the lady said, it's taken care of. And I said, what do you mean it's taken care of? She said, when you pulled in, God told me you were an evangelist and I was to fill your car up with gas. And I went out and I got in the car and I said, Lord, I sure like doing it better your way than my way. So we've been going on this route for a long time. So the Lord said, get out of debt, um, don't manipulate, and give. Begin to give. We were already tithing. We said, well, Lord, we're we're tithing. He said, yeah, that's not giving, that's returning. The tithe is mine. He said, give is when you give out of the 90%. And so we started giving. We went to Life Group right after that. And uh, there was a couple there. And we were about to pray over them because they were about to go on a short-term mission trip. And uh, they said, hey, we need to let everyone know we're we're not going to be able to go. And um, said, well, how come? They said, well, all the finances didn't come in, but nothing to worry about. Well, right before on the way, we had just gotten us some extra income for $800. And Debbie and I were talking about what we could do with that $800. And uh, I said to him, how much, how much money do you, do, do you need? How much are you short? Anyone want to take a guess? They said $800. We said, you need to go. And listen, this is fun. This is fun. Uh, I remember one time we were, uh, uh, um, I, I had a van, and this was a few years after the, the station wagon. I had this van, and I felt like the Lord said, sell your van. And I said, okay, uh, how much? He said, $12,000. On Sunday, this on a Saturday, on Sunday, this guy walks up to me in church, and he, does, he walks up just like this. He says, hey, you want to sell your van? And I said, uh, yeah. He said, 12000 I said, Yeah. He writes me a check right there and takes the van. We had to get a ride home from church. (laughs) 
he takes the van right there. I say, takes the van, leaves, drives away with it, you know. And we said, so Monday, we go to Costa Rica. This missionary picks us up. We're driving around in this rickety van. If you've ever been on the mission field, you know, exhaust is coming up through the floor, you know. And I said to this missionary, why don't you get you a new van? He said, I'm about to. He said, last week, I was driving by this car lot. God told me to stop and lay my hands on this van. And he told me he's going to give me that van. I said, how much is it? Anyone want to take a guess? He said 12000 I said, let's go back. And we bought the van for him right there. This is a fun life. I'm telling you, we, I can't tell you how fun this life is. And that's giving. And then God taught me about extravagant giving, which is a whole other level of giving. Now, let me tell you what happened, how this started. I went to preach at a church. There were 60 people in attendance, 60 people. It was a Sunday night, and it was the only meeting I had for the whole month. I, didn't, I did not have another meeting the whole month. And I, again, I, I said, I have no financial requirements. And the guy gets up. He says, let's give an offering to him. At the end of the service, the pastor comes to me and he holds his check out. He said, look at this. Look at this. He said, we've never done anything like this. I'm so proud of our people. Everybody just gave. He said, look. And I looked at the amount and it was enough for the whole month. And I remember thinking, God, you're so good. You're so good, Lord. Just trust in you and you're so good. And then the pastor is standing there and he's talking to me. And while he's talking to me, I could just kind of see over his shoulder was this missionary that had shared right before I spoke. And this, I heard this little voice when I saw the missionary. It said, give him the love offering. I remember exactly what I thought. I thought, I rebuke you, Satan. <clears throat> that's, that's not God. That's, that's not God. And this voice kept, and all of you have heard the Holy Spirit. And this voice said, give him the offering. Give him the offering. Give him the offering. And so finally, I walked up to the missionary, and I endorsed the check, and I folded it, and I said, I'm going to give you something. Two conditions. Number one, you don't look at it until after you leave, because it was a large check. Number two, I said, don't ever tell anyone what I did. So I gave him the offering. We went out to eat that night, and there were six couples, uh, Debbie and, five, and I and five couples from the church. And the six guys sat on one end of a, the uh, table and the six girls on the other end. It, we were at a pizza place. I remember that. And all of a sudden, these four guys started talking, and this guy across from me kind of just leaned in like that. And so I went, <laughs> I didn't know why. And, he, then he, and he said to me, how much was the love offering? Just like that. And so I just told him the amount. And then he goes, mm -hmm. where's the check? Just like that, where's the check? And I, I didn't even know this guy. I'd met him one time about two months before on a deer hunt. I just met him. Yeah, I shook his hand. And, and so I know I shouldn't have done this. I know I should have told the truth. But I was, I was kind of put on the spot. And I didn't want anyone to know what I'd done because God had told me don't manipulate. So I didn't want anyone to know. So I couldn't think. And so all of a sudden I just said, Debbie has it. <laughs> and then he said, go get it. I want to see it. So I said, Okay. So I got up and I walked down to the other end of the table where Debbie was and I leaned down and I said, how's your pizza? Good, mm -hmm. okay. What else is there to say? There's nothing, there's no check, you know? So I go back and I, I look, I, look, I lean over and like, these guys are still talking and I lean over and I, and I, again, I didn't tell the truth. I know it's wrong, but I didn't, I just didn't, so I, I couldn't think. I was kind of on the spot. So I said, it's in the car. And he said, it's not in the car. Just like that. So I said, where is it? <laughs> I mean, you know so much, you know, so. He said, you gave it away. And I said, how did you know that? He said, because God told me. This is a person with the gift of giving. Did you know that one out of seven of you sitting here today probably have the gift of giving? Because there are seven motivational gifts in Romans 12. What's amazing is that we know we talk about teachers in the church. We talk about uh, prophets in the church. We talk about uh, servants in the church. We talk about people who have mercy. We talk about leaders in the church, exhorters. We don't talk about givers. Yet it's a spiritual gift from God. And this guy had the gift of giving. I never met anyone with the gift of giving before. He said to me, he said, you gave it away, didn't you? I said, yeah. How do you know that? He said, God told me. He reached in his pocket and he pulled out a check that he'd written before he came, made out to our ministry, and he opened it up like this, and he held it out, and it was exactly 10 times the amount of the check I'd just given away. 10 times. Of the, and, and the check that I'd given away was not a round number. It had dollars and cents, and his check had dollars and cents on it as well. 
It's exactly 10 times the amount. And he held it out like this, and I, he was holding the top of it, and I reached out and I took the bottom, but he wouldn't let it go. <laughs> and I, I looked across the top of the check, right into his eyes. He's holding the top, I'm holding the bottom. He said, God's about to teach you about giving so you can teach the body of Christ. And he let the check go. And God started teaching us about extravagant giving.